That song is so appropriate, it goes with the title of my message today, Jesus Master. It's one thing to make Jesus your Savior. It's an entirely different thing to make him Lord and Master. If you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 17, I want to show you a great principle that Jesus is revealing to us in these verses. And this principle is that we're to operate with a spirit of gratitude and give thanks unto the Lord, and then give Jesus his rightful place in our lives. It is in the atmosphere of gratitude and thanksgiving that God releases his healing power. Amen. And the word of God can change your life. So we need to open our hearts and we need to receive what the Lord would say to us today. The principle that the Lord showed me is what we've been doing all morning. It is worshiping God. It's in the atmosphere of worship and praise and thanksgiving that God performs his miracles. We get saved, and if we're not careful, we get on a drift, and we forget that our names are in the book, and we forget to rejoice and praise God, and we sit in church, and we don't go on into what he has purposed for our lives we're held captive, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is a chain breaker. And chains come on people after they're saved. Financial difficulties, marriage problems, sickness and disease, and sin tries to creep into our life. But Jesus is the great, great redeemer, the great healer. In our text today, Jesus, he is on his way to Jerusalem. Look with me at Luke 17:11. It says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. A lot of people come to our church service and they feel like I've got to stand afar off. Not so when Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. See, in verse 13, it says, these ten lepers, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master. I want you to see that. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, he didn't pray for them. He said, go, show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass, as they obeyed, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. You wonder why we Pentecostal people shout and praise God? Because we have come to understand the power of praise. That is power in a shout. It helps you release your faith so you can receive from the Most High God. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And look at this. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, I want you to see this, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't just get healed, he got made whole. And Jesus doesn't just want to save you, heal you, and leave you. He wants your life to be completely Whole. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I want to talk to you about a principle that will set you free and that will help you obtain great treasures from God. My subject today, Jesus Master. Brother Philip, I just feel impressed to ask you to come and pray over this message, brother. I, I love praying people. Hallelujah. This is one of my prayer partners, and thank you so much, brother. 
Father God, we thank you again today for your precious holy word, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray now as we sit together in the presence of your servant, anointed to give us your word, we pray that our hearts will be open, our minds will be receptive, and our wills will be anointed to obey your word. Give us this day right now what you would have us to know and help us, Lord, to act upon it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much. In this story, Jesus, he is on his way to the city of Jerusalem, and he went through Samaria. Samaria is a city which is located approximately 45 miles from Jerusalem. My wife and I, we have been there. But Samaria, it's a city that most of the Jews in that day, they avoided Samaria. The Jews hated the Samaritans, actually, because they had intermarried with other races. They were half-breeds, and they were all mixed up, and because of this, the strict religious Jews, they hated these people. Isn't that a terrible thing to hate a people for no reason at all? They had absolutely nothing to do, the strict Jews, that is, with the Samaritans. And the Bible says that even though the Jews avoided Samaria, that Jesus went right through the midst of that city. That's one thing I love about Jesus. Many times the people that society writes off, these are the very people that Jesus has on his mind. Many times the people that we consider too much trouble to deal with, the people that others want to avoid, these are the people that Jesus came to help. And the Bible says he passed through the mist of Samaria. And Jesus went to where the people needed him. He went where the religious crowd said he should not go. He broke their religious rules. He broke and rocked their religious boat. He refused to play it safe. Jesus went to where he was needed, and that is just like Jesus. Jesus defied the religious rules, and he went through Samaria. And he entered a certain village, and it was a leper colony. It was a quarantine area. They had to stand off, and they had to cry, unclean, unclean. If you're watching by live stream, if you're in this church today, I want to tell you, it does not matter what you've done, you are welcome at Westmoreland. We are a loving, growing church, bringing hurting families to a healing Jesus. Jesus is Lord here. And because Jesus is Lord, you can come to this church and you can get miracles from the hand of God. Hallelujah. So other people, they would go around this quarantine areas or they would speak to the lepers through the fence. But Jesus, he opened the gate. Hallelujah. He went into the village and he entered where the mess was. Jesus went to where the problems were. Nobody can get into your life like Jesus can get into your life. Nobody can get in there to where it's messed up and where it seems like there is no hope. But Jesus is able to get in there and Jesus is able to heal you. Jesus is able to give you whatever you have need of, and then Jesus is able to make you whole. I don't know if you have ever been broken or you have ever been fragmented. I don't know that, but I, I do know about myself, and I know what he did for me, and I'm looking at people, and I know what he's done for you, and you know what he's done for you. And Jesus came and got right in the middle of your mess and he fixed you up. Amen. The world's looking for a fix. Let me tell you the greatest fix of all. That's to let Jesus Christ come into your heart, make him Lord and master of your life, and I promise you he will fix whatever is broken. He specializes in taking broken things and fixing them. Amen. One, one man, a uh, little boy, he was standing there, and this man was telling the little story. He said, uh, about the king, you know. He, he said, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. 
And the little boy, he's tugging on the man's leg like that, his trouser leg. And, and he said, Mr., Mr., he said, what is it, little boy? He said, Mr., Mr., if all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, why didn't they take him to the king? What I'm telling you is Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of kings, Lord of lords. And no matter what kind of mess is coming to your life, if you'll take it to the king, the king will fix it. Amen. Jesus is able to get in there, and Jesus is able to heal you and then make your life whole. That's my testimony. And he entered into a certain village, and when he entered into that village, ten lepers, they got excited. And even though according to the law in the book of Leviticus that these men could not touch Jesus, the Bible says they began to cry out in a loud voice. They began to cry out. And that was the key, my friends, to their deliverance. It was what they said. Amen. And it was how they said it. They got the master's attention. They began to cry out to God with a loud voice. And he heard their cry because they were speaking the language of faith. And these ten lepers, it looked like all hope was gone in their life, but they began to say something with their mouth. Amen. They began to speak the language of faith. You know, according to the Bible, the Bible says that when Jesus saw these men, that the first two words that they spake were, Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. Hallelujah. Now, the word Jesus, it means he who saves. He is a Savior. He is a Deliverer. If you've never been born again, you're in the right place. He will save you from the guttermost to the uttermost. And that's another part of my testimony. I tell you, he had to reach way down for me. He passed by some fine folk. He went past some PhDs, some lawyers, some doctors, and he reached way down in the cesspool of sin and iniquity, laid his hand upon me, said, I choose you. He picked me up, set me on the solid rock to stay, established my going, and I've been going and going and going and going ever since. If that's your testimony, go on and praise him for his wonderful works to the children of men. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, hallelujah, and we're to glorify God in everything that we do. Hallelujah. Jesus, he who saves. And the word master, it means commandment, commander, or one who is in charge, one who is in control. Now listen to their faith. We don't have any toes but Jesus, master. Our ears are gone, our nose has been eaten off, but Jesus, master, one in charge, one who sits on the throne, one who is in control of this situation, Jesus, master, we are crying out to you. That's the cry in the language of faith. Have you cried out in your situation? Have you cried out to him? See, so many people in the church, they're just looking a savior. I just want a feel-good type religion so I can go to church on Sunday morning and, and then I can uh, go do whatever I want to do with the rest of my life. Well, it doesn't work that way. He will save you, but the keeping power of Jesus is in going on with Jesus is making him not only Savior, but Lord and Master of your life. It becomes a lifestyle. I, I love that. Jesus, Master. I, I love to call him Master at times uh, because he is my Master. He says, no, you're not. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He said, I want you to gather together with people of like precious faith. I want you to feed your faith with the word of God. I want you to starve your doubts to death because I've got some stuff I want to deposit in your life. I've got some miracles I want to do for you, but you're going to have to come and walk with me. You're going to have to make me Jesus your Savior, Jesus your Lord, and Jesus Master. Go on and praise him. Jesus Master, have mercy. On me. Hallelujah. 
See, sometimes you just need to cry out to Jesus. Sometimes there is nothing else that can explain just how you feel. Sometimes there's nothing else that can, that can describe the pain. And all you, need, you, you know how to say to the Lord is Jesus, Master. Sometimes we just cannot find the words for that. That's why I'm so glad I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. When I don't know how to pray, I've got a divine heaven and language. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I tell you, you need to get into a church with Pentecostal power, Pentecostal blessing. Brother, uh, Pastor Ricky Nell preached a, a sermon Wednesday night on the power of Pentecost. There's something in our churches, let me tell you, that are not in the other churches that do not have the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said when he has come, he'll give you power and authority over all the power of the devil. There are signs and wonders and manifestations in the Pentecostal church. But Jesus, the man of God, he goes through this area. And they cried out, Jesus, Master, one who is in charge, have mercy on us. They weren't self-righteous. They didn't approach Jesus with arrogance. But they cried with a loud voice, have mercy. Mercy means I messed up, Lord. Give me another chance. Mercy means I fail, Lord. But Lord, let me try again. Mercy means, Lord, I can't fix this myself, but Lord, you can fix it. Mercy means you can't approach him in your own self-righteousness. But you approach him and you ask him for his help. And most of all, you ask him for his mercy. Amen. Mercy means I messed up. Give me another chance. Verse 14 says, Luke 17, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, there are two reasons that Jesus sent them to the priest. First of all, he wanted to activate their faith. I, I've preached on that so many times that faith without works is dead. But the first thing Jesus wanted to do, he says, go show yourself. Like he told the man with the withered arm, stretch forth thy hand. Like he told the lame man, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Like he told the, 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 the blind man, go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. Jesus was always working to get people's faith in action. And he told them, go show yourself to the priests. So secondly, the law said that if a person was showing physical signs of being cleansed of leprosy, that the way they got a clean bill of health was to go to the priest. And the priest would put them through a time of purification. And if the priest signed off, and if the priest said that they are totally healed, then they could go back to their family. Then they could be readmitted into society. Isn't it wonderful what Jesus does when he heals you and makes you whole? And then he says, go back to your family. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior. What a marvelous work he has done in so many of our lives. Oh, to be born of the Spirit of God, to know that your name is in the book, to have the peace of God that passeth all understanding, to have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, to know that you know that you know and you're sure that you're sure that you're sure. Whether you live, you live unto the Lord, or whether you die, you die unto the Lord. You've got the peace of God that passeth all understanding, and you're a rejoicer. I think we ought to just stand and give Jesus a praise break simply because our names are in the book. Look, that's the whole principle he's showing us in, in this study right here. He is showing us the power of praise, the power of thanksgiving, and how we're to thank him at all times for his wonderful works that he has done. Glory to God. Jesus, get your praise phrase, amen, like Jesus or Master or 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get a, a, a praise phrase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to open my mouth and with a loud voice, I'm going to shout of the goodness of God. My name's in the book. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're starting to sound Pentecostal now. Come on. Crank up the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You got to say in this thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Jesus, the man of faith, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. But we don't look healed, Jesus. We don't feel healed, Jesus. But faith says, I believe it, even though I can't see it. I believe it, even though I can't feel it. I believe it, even though I don't have it in my hand yet. I believe it, and I am moving Forward in the world of God, I am forgetting the things which are behind me. I am reaching forth to the things which are before me. I'm in the press. I'm like the woman that had to issue blood. She got in the press and she pressed her way into Jesus. People were touching him all around. She couldn't get to him, but she reached around and touched the hem of his garment because she had made up her mind. If I can just touch him. I shall be made whole. And if you're in this house or if you're watching by live stream, you can reach out and touch him. And let me tell you something. You will be made whole. He said, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He said this, for this purpose the Son of God was manifest to seek and to save that which was lost. My Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. The devil's the oppressor. Jesus is the blesser. Go on and praise him for all that he's done for you. Hallelujah. And as they went, talking the language of faith, they were all healed. They all got it. They were all cleansed. And the Bible says when they were cleansed, one of them, not eight, not six, not five, four, three, two. But one of them, he came back. Only one of them came back. This is the part that you've got to understand. And this is the part that really touches me because it exemplifies the church age, the lukewarm Laodicean church age that we live in today. There is a principle in this story. And I don't want you to miss the principle. Only one out of ten really love Jesus. Oh, I love him, Pastor. Only one out of ten wanted the blesser more than the blessing. But I love him, Pastor. Only one out of ten came back, fell at his feet, and worshipped. Woo! Worship him. I'll tell you that. Power and a praise. Uh, we were praising God. The, the little child was just dancing. Couldn't help herself. Just felt the power of the Spirit. And, uh, and, and then we got into worship. Well, now it's time, you know, to worship. It's an entirely different thing. At times we just worship. We just acknowledge who he is. We're in his presence. And we just worship him with a heart of thanksgiving. We just worship him with an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. See, see so when I got get to saying it, all of a sudden my spirit man starts rising and tears start filling my eyes. Bro Brother Philip was sharing a, a scripture with me this morning that we'll fearful and wonderfully made and went on and shared it. And tears began to well up in the eye. He said, God has blessed me so much with this. See, that's what happens to you when you make him Jesus master. Jesus master. Jesus 
Master, it's me, Lord. I need to touch you. That woman that said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, she knew what the scripture said. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wing. She said, if I can just touch something that's in touch with him, whoo, I'll be made whole. If you come to a church where the power of God is, you're in touch with someone who is in touch with him. The Bible says together, together with people of like precious faith. That's power in a corporate anointing. And Jesus shows up, he says, where two or three are gathered or 2,000, 3,000, it doesn't matter. He said, if you gather in my name, I'm right there. I'm in the midst of them. And we are gathered here today in the name of Jesus. I want you to notice this. The number who prayed, P-R-A-Y-E-D, was much greater than the number who praised, P-R-A-I-S-E-D. All ten lepers prayed, Jesus, Master, with a loud voice, have mercy on us. But only one returned to give him thanks and to make him Master. They all prayed, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But only one returned to make him their master. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, have mercy on us. Make it a little more personal. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. I need mercy, Lord. I need mercy. I need you to be merciful to me, Lord. I'm in a battle. You said it yourself. Put John 10, 10 verse up there. Said the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. We're in the battle of the ages. It's a battle for eternal souls. And let me tell you something. Just because you got saved, that doesn't mean that the devil's going to give up on you. That means he's coming as a roaring lion. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus said, Luke, John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I love this part. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. This is me. I'm calling out, Lord. It's me. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, O oh Lord. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Only one returned to give him thanks and to make him master. See, I thought about how God has really blessed this church. We've had some great miracles. We, we've had some of them. Just, we've paraded some of them today during Sunday school and during the morning worship service. We have seen great miracles. We have seen, seen sinners saved. We've seen people sanctified, delivered from bondages, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues, unknown tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. We've seen the captives set free. We've seen marriages restored. We've seen homes put together. We've seen great healing. We've seen all types of miracles in the house. Jesus wants us he wants you and he wants me to have all of that. But he came to give us life and to give that to us more abundantly. And, and because he came and paid redemption's price, he deserves his rightful place in every one of our lives. I quoted it earlier. He said, you're bought with a price. Whether you recognize it or not, you are bought, 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 bought. Bought with a price. You're no longer your own. You're bought with a price. And Jesus says, I purchased you with my own precious blood. And you belong to me. You don't belong to you anymore. You belong to me. We were all slaves in a slave market. And Jesus Christ went down into that slave market. And he said, I'll buy that one. I'll buy that one. I'll buy that one. I'll buy that one. The devil said, what are your credentials? Who do you think you are? He said, I'm both the buyer and the price. He said, I'm the high priest and the offering. I'm the altar and the sacrifice. I'm the all in all. I buy every one of them with my precious blood. 
The devil said, I can give them the whole world and I can do it for them right now. Jesus said, that's all right. I'll go to an old rugged cross and I'll pour out my blood to redeem every one of them. I'll make them as and join as with my Father. Hallelujah. And I'll give them eternal life. And throughout the ceaseless, endless ages, they will not spend time with you, devil, in a devil's hell. They will be with me in an in area of eternal bliss. Every step shall be a thrill. Every the Lamb's book of life is, is called the city directory. The caretakers are angels. Hallelujah. Every meal is a banquet. Eyes not seen, is not heard. It's not even in the hearts of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Don't you love him? Cry it then. Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. Say it with me. Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. Say it loud. Shout it like those men did with a loud voice. Jesus, Master. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my neighbors. Have mercy on the people I come into contact with. Oh, Jesus, I made you master. Will you just have mercy? Let me win some souls for you. Let me point somebody to the cross. Oh, give me the sickle, oh God, that I may gather the end time harvest. Give me that sharp two-edged sword. Hallelujah. I must be about my father's business. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Jesus, Master, send me to the foreign field. Jesus, Master, let me go preach some revival. Jesus, Master, you said I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus, Master, make me a vessel of honor, sanctified, meet for the Master's shoes, and prepared for every good work. Go on and praise him. Jesus, Master. Hallelujah. Jesus wants his rightful place in our lives. And it's in the at atmosphere of gratitude and thanksgiving that Jesus releases his healing power and he makes your life whole. So many times we're like the seven disciples. They went out to preach and they came back rejoicing. Jesus, the devils are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you in my name. That's a small thing. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I was there when God kicked him out. Hallelujah. That's a small thing that he's subject to my name. Because I've given you power to trade upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's a small thing. But I've done something great for you. I have saved you. I have given you eternal life. I have prepared a home for you in heaven. And that's the greatest miracle of them all. And I want you to rejoice, rejoice, rejoice because your names are in the book. I want you to rejoice because your names are in heaven. We get to looking at the circumstances and the situation. If these ten lepers had just looked at themselves, they would have said, no hope, no hope. Everybody that passed through that said, no hope, no hope. But Jesus passed through. Woo! It always makes a difference when Jesus passes by. And he went right in there where they were hurting. And he healed them. I want you to notice what Jesus is saying. He says, I want you to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I have forgiven all of your sin. I have given you eternal life. And I want you to rejoice, not because of what you're going through, not because I can heal you, not because I can make you whole, but I want you to rejoice because your name is in the book. You are saved. And that's the greatest miracle of all is to have Jesus to take a sinner with a black heart, draw them and translate to himself, then translate them out of the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of light in whom they have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of God's grace. God put his hand upon you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to come and make my boat inside of you. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you everything that you need in your life. I'm going to make your life whole. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah.
One of them returned. And he said to the master, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you from my heart. Lord, master, take control of my life. That's what he was saying. See, he had an attitude of gratitude. The other nine, they were healed also. All ten were healed. But only one returned to worship Jesus. And because he returned and worshiped Jesus, he got more than the other nine put together. Put, put verse, uh, uh, arise, that last verse there. Jesus said, arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't say your faith has healed you. He said, you a whole man. He said, I have completely delivered you. Every shackle, every chain, not only leprosy, but I have come and I have injected you with eternal life. Hallelujah. I have delivered you. I have saved you. I have healed you. I have sanctified you. I have made you whole. You belong to me. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. Yes, Jesus made that man whole. The others were all healed, but this man was made whole. I got to thinking about this principle as the Lord revealed it to me. The, the same principle is in this story as in other stories. If you want your life to be whole and complete, then you must allow Jesus to become master of it all. Give Jesus the rightful place in your life. Who am I talking to? Brother Kyle said, I had never given Jesus the rightful place in my life. But he testified this morning. He said, I'm giving Jesus. Preaching my sermon, brother. You want to know if Jesus will use him. He's already using him. I want to give Jesus his rightful place in my life. Hallelujah. See, they were all healed, but only one was made whole. See, if the principle is this. If you need healing today, come and worship him. If you need salvation, come, and he will make you whole. If you need a financial breakthrough, come and cry out, Jesus, Master, I need a breakthrough, whatever that breakthrough is. If your marriage needs healing, if your home needs healing, if your children are about to run you crazy, just come and cry, Jesus, Master, Take control of my life, and I promise you on the basis and the authority of God's word, Jesus will make you whole. Amen. The Syrophoenician woman, she came and worshiped Jesus. Her daughter was grievously vexed of the devil, and Jesus healed that daughter. On another occasion, there was a leper that came off of the mountainside. He fell down at Jesus' feet. He, he, he cried, Jesus, if you can, you can make me whole. Worshipped him. Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. The demoniac of Gadara, he was full of legions of devils. And he came, he fell at Jesus' feet. And he worshipped him. And Jesus delivered him, glory to God. And he was so excited. He said, I want to follow you, Lord, wherever you go. Jesus said, that's all right. I want you to come and follow me, but I want you to go home first. You just go out and preach Jesus. If you ever look at the Gadara, there were 5,000 fed plus the women and children, maybe 20,000. And then Jesus goes back to that same region, Decropolis, on another occasion and and. The people, they, they come and worship him. They told him, depart from our coast. The first time, he, well, where the pigs were cast out. Let me get my story straight. When he cast the pigs out of that man. And, and then he comes back to that region. And that man, he has gone out and he has discipled his family. He's discipled his neighbors. And they all come to where Jesus is. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas. They were in the jail cell at midnight. Amen. And they sang praises unto God. They began to worship him. They, they made him not only their Savior, but 
Jesus, Master. And all of a sudden, the jail's sail began to shake. The chains and the shackles fell off of these apostles. Amen. If their chains and shackles need to fall off, there's some times I always need to fall off. Amen. And guess what? The whole jail cell got saved, and then the jailer and all his family got saved. If you start worshiping Jesus, if you'll make him Lord of your life, if you'll make him master, praise God, he will take care of your every need. Go on and praise him. There's power in praise and worship. Have you ever wondered what would happen if we would, from our hearts, really begin to worship him. To tell Jesus, I'm so thankful, Lord, that I'm saved. I have to tell him that ever so often. We get all puffed up. And we think we're somebody that we aren't. I am what I am. By the grace of God. And I ask him to help me to walk in humility. Not self-righteousness. Not arrogance. But to remember. That's where you were. Look. At what Jesus. Has done. In your life. Look at what he's done in your family's life. See when I thought thinking about that. How he saves us. And he's a generational God. I just got to praise him. I, I, it's not always. I, most of the time it just sparks because of what he's done for me. But then I got to thinking about. I get to think about what he's done for my family. And, and, and what he's done in my life. And I just have to praise him. See, there's so much power, Pastor Ricky. I want us to come to the altar today. And what I want us to do. I want us to just worship. To worship him that. Our names are in the Lamb's book of life, that he has saved us. That's the greatest miracle of all. Come and worship him. And the rest of the blessings that he has purposed for your life, I mean come like you mean it. I, I shouldn't even have to ask you twice. After a sermon like that, you ought to be running to the altar. Hallelujah. Come and just worship him. Cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. You did the greatest miracle of all. When you save me, come and worship him and get the rest of the blessing that he has purposed for your life. That's the principle of the whole story. It's in the atmosphere of praise and worship and total submission to God that we are made whole. If you can walk, if you can roll on down here in that wheelchair, everybody come to the altar. Let's get together with one accord. Don't think you can get the blessing sitting back. You got to come. You got to come after the invitation is given. Come to Jesus. Come. Put your faith in action. Come. Come. Come make him Lord. Come make him master of all. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I come. I just come and I worship you. I fall at your feet. Jesus, master, have mercy on me. Oh, hallelujah. There is power in the name. Yes, there is power, There's power in the name Jesus. of Jesus. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I got a praise chain. phrase, Jesus, break Master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Break every chain. Glory, break glory, every glory. Chain. My name's break in the book. Get your praise phrase and just start shouting out to God. If you want to, just go and praise him in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I love you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy on me. Thank you, Lord, for extending it to my family. Thank you, Lord. I make you master. Jesus, master. I thank you. I worship you. I want you to know I am so thankful. Break every I want chain. you to know Break how much every chain. I don't have words to tell you, Lord. Break but you've broken all the chains. Break every every chain. bondage you made me Break whole. And Lord, I come today, I do have need. But as I'm worshiping you, Lord, I thank you for supplying that need. I thank you for healing my body. I thank you, Lord, for this job that I need. 
I thank you, Lord, for my family, for your grace. I thank you for that little child, Lord. I thank you for my family, my children, my grandchildren. I thank you for those wonderful blessings, Lord. But the greatest thing of all that I thank you for is, Lord, my name's in the book. Woo! <laughs> my name's in the book, Lord. I'm yours. I'm yours. My name's in the book. Hallelujah. Thank you. Power, Lord. Your name. Hallelujah. Oh, there's power. Yes, Lord. Just tell him what you have need of. It's like those lepers say, Jesus, Master. Jesus, Master. You don't have to understand it all. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord. Break 